Hello there, and welcome back to my painting channel. Today I am going to be painting Molog himself. Molog is a Warhammer Underworld's Night Vault Warband leader. He's a little bit of a cave troll sort of looking miniature as you can see here. He's a really awesomely sculpted miniature. So we're going to paint this guy up. Um, and this guy being a cave dweller, this guy living sort of uh, underground, wanted to try to make his um, his skin tones a little bit sort of pale and um, not so so vibrant. So his skin tones itself, we're going to start off by using a Vallejo pastel blue and put the number across the bottom. And that's all I'm doing here is just using um, a nice medium sized brush. And I've thinned down my paints um, so that they flow nice and smoothly onto the miniature. I'm just making sure that I cover all of the skin itself. You just want to make sure to cover all of the uh, all of the skinned area. What I've done for this miniature, which is something that I do quite a lot, is I've primed uh, the model in grey. And again, that's going to add to this sort of pastel tone on the miniature. Um, personally, I don't prime miniatures in black. Uh, I find putting too many layers on top of the miniature to bring the colour back up can sometimes distort the details which is what we don't want. Grey is a happy medium but it also helps with that um, sort of pastel toned down effect as well. So like I say nice thin coats of pastel blue from Vallejo and we should be able to uh, create a nice looking uh, even skin tone on, on this, uh, this Molog. Just, just take your time, make sure that you cover all of the skin. Uh, step back, take a look, make sure that you cover in all of the parts, you know, the fingers, don't forget the legs, uh, the underneath of the chin, just around where the mushroom points are, just across the top. Uh, it can be a little bit awkward sometimes to get your brush in there, but um, like I say, take your time, have fun, you, you'll get there, no problem. You might notice it looks like I've um, I, I'm painting the uh, painting the, the the paint on a little bit thick in places, but it's not that it's thick. It's because it's it's watered down quite a lot, so it looks thicker than it is. And once it dries, it's going to dry into a nice even coat. So once you've got the skin tones, you're going to move on to a shade and just cover all of that skin that we've done with the shade. Now you're going to use um, Dragonoff Nightshade for this. Dragonoff Nightshade is a nice blue shade. However, Dragonoff Nightshade is very dark. So what I've done with this is I've made sure to thin this down uh, to about halfway. So about 50-50 with... Um, uh, something like Lamy and Medium, something like that. And the reason for that is because Dragon of Night Shade is so dark, if it pools in some of the areas um, or just sits on the skin of the model, uh, you end up with some really dark patches, whereas you only really want those dark patches to sit in the recesses. Um, so by thinning this paint out uh, with a medium, what you're actually doing is allowing it to move smoother over the raised areas so that then it does only really sit in those recessed points. With the shade as well, if it does pool too much in one area, you can use your brush to manipulate and move that around. So just try to make sure that you don't have too many big pools. Um, try to get creative so that when it comes to you building the colors back up, you can notice uh, sort of where the darkness is and it gives you a clear cut line of where the shade to the mid-tone is okay um, so like normal like I normally say just take your time have some fun uh, there's no need to just splodge this on have a little bit of control um, and, and you'll, you'll see the control as, as you go in so uh, instead of just throwing big chunks on as you see it's all about controlled brush strokes because the more you control sort of the direction of the brush you're actually controlling the direction of the shade as well so you're, you're, you're telling the shade sort of where to sit then rather than to just pull in sort of um, some of the more difficult areas there you go you see where it's sitting in the, the recesses but actually 
is only slightly toning down on the raised points and that's going to come in handy a little bit later when we start painting the skin back up. You want to just do this and cover the whole miniature and give it plenty of time to dry and once it's dry you can go back to the pastel blue from Vallejo and to get the skin on this uh, miniature to, to look as um, kind of like a cartoon effect or kind of like um, a bit more of a, a standout kind of effect is for me I tend to paint um, I give myself a really good strong position on the desk I get both elbows on the desk um, hold the miniature nice and close um, which gives you a lot more sort of control when moving your brush and then with your brush then I tend to use very very light um, small sort of brush strokes so that you've got quite a lot of control you might find it easier and the best way to start this is to, to learn to paint bringing the brush towards yourself because when you bring in the brush towards yourself you kind of naturally get in a lot more control and as you get a bit more used to it then you can sort of get used to painting both you know away from you and towards you but pretty much with this now with the skin what I'm doing is I'm just kind of going back and repainting the blue on as if um, as if I was sketching so just uh, taking a long time to build very very thin lines um, and those thin lines then any part that I need to be slightly thicker um, I'm just filling in as I go so it's just kind of like sketching the paint back in um, in very fine lines so you get a lot of defined detail um, the dark points are showing through from the wash from the Dragon of Nightshade but then this mid-tone is going to sit really nicely in between uh, this takes quite a lot of practice so sometimes it might be better to learn on something a little bit smaller first um, and just learn to just, just build those little sketch lines um, I mean this is probably the most time consuming part of the miniature because the majority of the miniature is skin anyway and we're going to take a lot of time focusing on small accurate brush strokes to build that character back um, this will be the part of the miniature that will take you the most time but hopefully in the end it'll be the part of the miniature that you're the most proud of so when you do finish paint in your miniature and you look back on it um, you should be able to to feel like there's a big sense of uh, accomplishment and a big sense of achievement with what you've done because it will look uh, it will look amazing it will stand out on the table uh, or your shelf or your display cabinet it will look fantastic but as you see just trying to keep those lines nice and straight nice and controlled not going for anything too long so the lines are nice and small uh, like I say sketching so just tiny little bits here and then leave a little gap so that that creates an element of depth a little bit more like the, the, the folds in the skin and things like that so you're building in very very small controlled stages but you can see how that arm now is starting to, to, to show off a lot more character than just being Coloured then washed. See now we 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 pulling out um, uh, like a little bit more character out of it, and it's getting that sort of sketchy, cartoony kind of effect coming out of it as well. I mean, this miniature, oh, this miniature is perfect for it anyway, um, because this miniature has such a great level of character. Um, so what I'm going to do here is just speed up the next few processes or speed up the next few bits where I'm painting just to show you how small and controlled those brush strokes need to be so just showing you around the knuckles and the hands and as you can see just just build in because this paint has been thinned as you build in you're going to get that nice even um, transition that nice even sort of blend between your darker layer 
to your lighter layer or your mid-tone layer here, uh, which is what you want. You don't want it to be really dark, then really light in patches. You want to kind of make sure that the uh, uh, the tones and the colors all sort of mix and, and, and match so that they, they don't look too out of place. And again, continuing on with a little bit of a speed up just to show you these these small accurate brush strokes so just following around the skin tones as you can see with the lower part of his back here he's got sort of like these little bubbles where uh, the, 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 the shade is sat in towards his spine um, so I'm just building on the lines that are already there and on the shapes that are already there as you can see he's just kind of building the character and sketching those colors back in really cool effect it's a really rewarding effect as well like I say it's gonna take a while so patience is key with this because you don't want to rush it or do the back and make the back look amazing and then rush the front you want to make sure to take your time if it means you've got to paint it in stages then that's fine as well you know just make sure that you you paint in for the enjoyment of painting and you paint in to make sure that you get your miniature looking the best you can make it look so again, showing you this mid-tone. Just gonna show you a little bit on the face here. I'll try to avoid going too much into the, um, the the sort of bumps and things on the top of his head uh, because the, the paint is quite thinned down. It, it might sort of detract and move into the area where the shade is sat in the recessed areas. And I don't want I don't want it to, uh, I don't want it to take over the hard work that, that I've already done. You see, he was just picking up those rec uh, th those raised areas. Sorry, just picking up those raised areas, building up that character, building up those brush strokes. Really taking out time to do the controlled areas. Small, small controlled brush strokes. Look. And the end result will be will, will be nice. The end result is going to be going to be worth the effort. So once you've got all of the skin highlighted or mid-toned, I'm going to move on to doing a slight highlight and with this one I'm going to use Citadel's Fenrisian Grey. Uh, a lot of people would use this for things like the Space Wolves. This is a nice light blue. Um, it's only sort of a small shade more than the pastel blue that we used as a base so the highlighting is going to stand out but it's not going to be too extreme so again in keeping with that um, pastel type toned down skin colors for a cave dweller this is going to um, add the highlights create that depth but without making it stand out and stick out too much so again using those small controlled brush strokes what we're doing now is we're kind of going around where we've been um, but you're being a bit more controlled so that means you're using very thin lines this time and you're leaving gaps now for the mid-tone to sit so you've kind of got the shade then your mid-tone then you're highlighting a different stage so it's giving the, um, the illusion of depth So you see, we're just picking out on specific points rather than going over all of what we've done with the pastel grey. We're just picking out on those areas that stand out the most. And showing you the face is one of the easier points because obviously his eyebrow, the, the top of the ears, uh, around the chin, um, there are quite a lot of folded bits and folded areas there. So we're just going to pick out on parts without doing the whole thing just there so nice thin lines just like that so that highlights without taking over there you go so you're just hitting the edges rather than the whole point uh, the, the, the whole folded area and you see there a nice thin line and another nice thin line just across that folded point of the neck so we get in the highlights, kind of sticking more to the left hand side with this highlight so that it looks like the light is coming in from 
uh, a specific side. And to give you an idea as to what I'm doing in the soft underbelly part as well. Using the same colour, the Fenrisian grey. Uh, and using those small brush strokes. Um, using a little bit of creative licence at this point and actually not worrying too much about uh, where the brush strokes are and where the lines are because this is going to add to sort of the texture of the skin and create a little bit of an illusion of the skin so you see it's just using those lines but I'm not tying those lines together too much so that you do see a little bit of the um, so you do see the, the, the brush strokes then as well and that's fine that's absolutely fine if you want to show off some of the brush strokes in your painting that's great because again that's showing off your creative uh, process that's showing people how how much work and effort you've put into painting uh, your miniature as well. I used to be a, a little bit afraid of showing um, brush strokes on my miniatures. I used to think that everything had to be the most smoothed out tones, everything had to be uh, curved and smoothed in certain ways. Um, but if you're actually painting with a brush, sometimes it's nice to see the process and sometimes it's nice to see the hard work that someone's put into a miniature by seeing those brush strokes. So, by all means, paint and don't worry about your brush strokes. As long as the paint is thin, it will blend into the miniature quite nicely and this is the same here you see I'm leaving some gaps around his uh, belly area around his softer underbelly so when the lines are painting up and down it's almost like painting around a little ball and, uh, and leaving those those gaps there just like so so you can tell that it's been hand painted you can tell that I've spent a lot of time on the miniature uh, but it also adds to the depth and the character of the miniature as well because it gives him a, a, a sort of different tone, uh, a, a different sort of texture to his skin. Um, so, I'm going to move on. Now that I'm pretty happy with the skin, what you want to look at is using Pink Horror. And for this, I've used uh, Lamian Medium. I've used probably about three parts Lamian to one part Pink Horror and that's just to make sure that this, as you see, is very, 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 very watered down and thin. So for this I'm going to paint his nose up pink. You can paint his nose any colour you like. You don't even have to change the nose to make it pink. You can keep his nose blue should you want or whatever colour you're painting it. But by keeping the, the, the pink and the paint very thin, what you're actually going to get is the underneath colours will show through but you get in um, like a glaze effect. And when people talk about glazing, this is kind of what they mean, is you're talking about a very, very, very thin down version of a paint so that you can create a color on top of a color. Um, so you can make nice transitions between one color to another. So transition between the blue to the pink. Now, it's up to you how many layers you want to put this on and how much you want that pink to stand out. Uh, and for me, I put two layers on because I wanted the paint to be a little bit more vibrant. Uh, but again, that's up to you. Um, you can paint it as vibrant or as diluted as you like. Now we move on to the frog. And with the frog, uh, I wanted the frog to be very, very vibrant. Normally with things like um, frogs and lizards and things like that, uh, bright colours always look really, really nice for them. So. For me, I've gone on to a Citadel Moot Green, which is a very, very nice, bright, uh, like, lime green. Uh, for this, it's going to make our frog stand out loads on top of that pastel blue skin of Molog himself. So take your time with this bit, especially around the fingers and the fingernails and things like that, because Molog is holding him. You just want to try to uh, take your time so that you don't get your paint done the other uh, parts of Molog and, and do the hard work. I'm going to put Dragon off Nightshade on his nose. Again, this is watered down with Lamian Medium, so again, very, very light. So pro you're looking at um, three three parts of Lamian Medium to the one Dragon off Nightshade. And again, because Dragon off Nightshade is so dark, um, it's just so that I can control where that shade sits. And the reason I'm putting the Dragon off Nightshade onto the pink um, is because it just ties the nose into the rest of the miniature, into the skin, because we want to make sure that it, it all matches and it all looks good. And moving on to the belt then, um, just base coat in to begin with with a Citadel Dryad Bark. Uh, again, 
nice thin coat so that it is um, nice and even, nice and easy to move. This is quite a thick paint, being quite a base uh, color, so thin it down so that it, it moves easier onto your miniature, like this. So you want to make sure that we do the belt, um, but you also want to make sure that you do the underneath as well. So the little flap that he has here, um, just make sure that that gets painted um, in the same color. On the front as well, he also has um, some of the leather around either side of the flap he has on the front here. You just want to go around and make sure that the edged area is uh, the same colour so that again it ties in. It's all about keeping him bright, keeping the frog bright so that the colours pop, but trying to keep the rest of the points um, like a sort of earthy tone so that it ties in with being a cave dweller. So as you see that dryad bark, it needs to go on that flap as well, just at the back. This point is quite fiddly, be very careful not to get paint on the feet or the legs. Um, again, take your time. With the frog then, we're gonna shade this guy with a Vallejo green wash. Now you can use a couple of different types of washes. Another good one for this uh, the, to go on top of moot green if you're a Citadel user would be Bale Tan Green. Um, I use the Vallejo wash personally because the Vallejo wash dries a little bit sort of um, chalky which means it picks out some of the darker points. It doesn't change the colour underneath too much. But when it dries chalky as well, and then I paint some of the layers back on, the paint sticks to the chalky effect um, much quicker, much easier. So it's just a bit of personal preference for myself. I like the Vallejo green wash. I like the, the chalky effect to paint on top of. just make sure to cover the whole miniature um, again just being careful with pooling you don't want it to uh, to detract or take any of the details off uh, of our little frog the <laughs> weapon itself uh, I'm gonna move on and use a Rakarth flesh and uh, a Rakarth flesh is like a uh, it's a good good mid-tone color um, it's quite a, an awkward one to describe um, because it's not quite grey, it's not quite white, it's it's a, a, an interesting colour, but it, it has a really good um, property for things like, uh, as you see, the, the weapon. So the highlights for our frog, going back to the moot green, so a nice thin coat of the moot green just being pushed across the uh, raised areas. So just bringing back that detail, bringing back that brightness and vibrance. This time we're using a smaller brush just to be sure that I don't get too close to those uh, those hands or the fingernails or anything like that, just so that we try to keep the, the detail and, and not make any mistakes, you know, and see those, those very small, uh, those, those very small controlled brush strokes. You can see it's all about um, taking taking small or putting small bits of paint onto the miniature at a time, not brushing, not trying to, to cover it too much, just looking to hit those areas where the light is sitting. So across his neck area, across the arms, the feet. Here you go just across the lips while leaving the, the shaded area in the recess point just under the lip there. Uh, there you go, so that's creating the uh, creating the depth across the frog. You see we do the same now, just go down the arm. Leaving little bits of our shades, so just little gaps here and there. Just hitting those points on his fingers. I 
I know everyone loves the frog on this model. I am yet to find someone that doesn't love the frog. The model itself is beautifully sculpted, looks so full of character, um, and yet everyone I talk to always mentions the frog. So special mention to the frog. You could do with a name as well. So again, just taking our time, nice and soft, nice and gentle brush strokes. It does take a little bit of practice to work out where your mid-tones are, so once you've shaded your model and you're looking to highlight, it does take a, a little bit of practice to sort of get used to where you want the, the, the shade to sit in those recesses. But uh, like the more you paint, um, the more used to where those shades uh, should be set in, you, you'll sort of become. Um, another technique I like to use when it comes to painting, especially highlighting certain parts of the miniature, as I'm showing you here, is to use the base colour, but just mix it with a slight little bit of a lighter colour. So for this, sticking with Citadel, I'm using the Moot Green, but I've also mixed a small amount of pallid witch flesh into it. So probably three parts moot green with one part moot, uh, yeah, sorry, three parts moot green, one part pallid witch flesh. I'll get that out eventually. Um, and that's just to create a slight highlight without detracting from the base color. And then I like to go back to the original color, so the moot green, and just paint those slight highlights back onto just the raised areas. I apologize for my hand being in the way, this is the beauty of being left-handed. Um, yeah, so as you see, it's just picking out on the raised areas. Again, not worrying too much about those brush strokes, because those brush strokes are going to add to the, the skin texture and things like that. It's going to create a little bit more character to it as well. But this little mixture, this simple combination, Colours that I tend to use quite often are things like the Vallejo Bone White or an Army Painter Skeleton Bone. Because they are um, light creams, they don't detract from the miniature's colour, so they are really nice to use for slight highlighting. And with this weapon, just going to use a quick shade of Agrax Earthshade. Nice even tone, straight across. Uh, this one I'm using just straight out of the pot. There's no thinning with this one because, again, the earthy tones, we want this to be nice and uh, nice and brown. We want this to tone down quite nicely. When you put the uh, the, the mid-tones back up, it's going to look and pop that much more. Um, it's going it's to look a lot, lot nicer. It's going to pop that much more. just make sure to cover all of this. Again, be careful around the hands when you shade in this because you don't want to end up getting the Agrax Earth shade, which is quite a dark brown shade. You don't want to get that on the skin that you've worked so hard to get the effects off on the fingers and things like that. So just take your time getting into those gaps across the top, as you see there. We're just going to fill in some of the uh, metallic points now with a brass scorpion. I've chosen brass for um, this particular paint. Uh, paint job purely based on the fact that like I was saying you want to try to keep earthy tones So we're trying to keep to the browns and things like that for his weapons the Rakarth flesh the the brown leather effect around his belt So brass will tie into that. It's a bit more of a an earthy metallic rather than using a silver or anything and and then detracting from your miniature you kind of want this to tone into the miniature instead Don't forget to tool his jewelry Just be careful doing the ringlets around the ears. Again, we don't want to get brass scorpion or any other paint onto the, the hard work that we've done with the skin. And then we're going to go quickly the tone of Agrax Earth Shade across the brass. Again, this ties it in. Um, like I say, Agrax is quite a dark brown shade, so this should tone it down. So you still get the bronze effect, but it doesn't doesn't look too bright and shiny, this tones it down quite nicely. There you go, don't forget his, uh, his jewellery. 
keep saying him in my little painting world monologue is a, a man troll. Um, that doesn't mean that, that it's always a man troll. I mean, it, it, it's a troll. So uh, I just envisioned my uh, little painting as a man. That doesn't mean that it's got to be a, a man troll for you guys. You can paint your troll uh, however you like. There you go. Once the Agrax shade is set, uh, you're going to go back to the Rakarth flesh, and again with a thinned, um, with a thinned version of the paint, we're going to go back to those very light, slow, controlled brushstrokes. As you see, and what we're going to do is just pick up those highlighted points. So, like we were doing with the skin, using that sort of creative license to pick out the areas that you want to. Uh, to be brought back up so with the weapon you want to try to leave some gaps in between so that it creates that illusion again of, of depth so that it looks like these bumped and raised areas are actually raised up quite nicely because then the shaded area in between is giving that effect and that semblance of um, of depth like so so that's that's how we do in the straight points, but there are also rounded areas on on the weapon as well. Can't quite remember what they call the barnacles. Um, you guys can let me know if I'm wrong. Anyway, I think they, they may be barnacles or something like that. Um, and pretty much, you're just gonna uh, just just lightly go around, just like so. Uh, just go around those in like sort of a, a small circle of motion, just to try to get the the color back across. Um, again, you haven't got to be overly, incredibly precise. It's because the the paint is is nice and thin. It's just about creating that um, mid tone color that we started with and trying to raise that back up on the, the raised areas. And this can be a fun little process. It can again take a little bit of time. Don't worry about the time. It, it'll be worth it. Um, the longer you spend on on certain areas the better it it makes your whole miniature look so really take your time and go through each point make sure that you've you've hit each one of those barnacles i don't even know the barnacles i'm calling them barnacles now anyway that's that's what they are on 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 my Molog's weapon he's got a lot of barnacles <laughs> so yeah just take your time Again, be very careful with the fingers. Try not to mix that Rakarth onto the hard work that we've done on the skin tones. Um, and again, make sure that you're in a nice, comfortable, strong position. So sort of keeping your, your hands nice and close, which, which normally works for me. And it allows me to um, allows me to have a more controlled brush stroke rather than um, rather than being a little bit too wild then and, and shaky because I find the further away my hands get the more they shake so keeping them nice and close together tends to keep the uh, the brush strokes nice and controlled and nice and even as well and because we're using a thin coat as well because we, we thin our paints when we paint and this might take a couple of coats to get it exactly how you want it anyway, the vibrancy and things like that. I think eventually it took, on these rounded areas, on these barnacle parts, I think it took me two coats to get to the color that I wanted back with the Rackarth Flesh. Um, and that's fine because the first coat is thin. What you tend to get is that that, that blend then from the shade through to the mid-tone. Um, it, it tends to be a lot more even, it tends to be a lot more um, subtle. Once we're done with all of the, the weapon, you're gonna move back to the belt a moment. You're gonna go, um, my tried and tested, my favorite sort of way of painting uh, leather is once we've done the dryad bark as a base, you then use Doomble Brown in a nice thin, um, in, a, in a, a, a nice thinned layer because this dries, uh, this, this is like a ready brown, so it's got a, a, a kind of like red effect to it or a red tone to it. And this does dry into a very quick and simple um, leather effect. 
can see that I made a little bit of a mistake there. So with a little bit of water and a little bit of brushwork, I will remove that. Just the good thing about thinning your paints is if you do make a mistake and a little bit touches your model, you can just use a small amount of water uh, to, to, to wash that away, which is great. So the hardest part of the Doomwell Brown is trying to get back underneath into where that um, into where that flap is underneath his legs. Again, the paint is thinned. It looks like I'm using it out of the bottle, but it's because I've wet my brush previously. So the paint is is, is nice and thin and flowing. You see how easily it comes off my paintbrush. So and what I'm doing here is just leaving a small line of the dryad bark just across the crease. So again, it creates that flowing element and that crease element. For fans of edge highlighting, if you enjoy edge highlighting and point it, uh, put in an extra level of um, highlight just across the tips of, of what you're painting. Then the next step for the belt would be a Tusker Gore Fur. This is also a Citadel paint and for this you just want to pick up on the very very specific raised edges as you see. This time we're not filling anything we're just picking out on those points that are sticking out the most so the corners of the belt the very edges of the belt that's an entirely optional stage. I mean, you don't have to do that, but I know that some people really do enjoy uh, like an edge highlight anyway. And so for the the teeth and the nails and things like that, uh, you want to use Bone White from Vallejo. Like I say, I tend to use a lot of cream colours rather than whites because with a cream colour, it's easier to... Um, tone down but then also highlight because if you use a cream you can highlight that with a white whereas if you use a straight white uh, that that's it it becomes very very difficult to use any highlights on something that is already white so if you start with a cream then tone it down then come back up to cream you can then also go back up higher into some of the lighter sort of um, whites and, and bright whites for edges and things like that these are probably one of the most difficult points to paint on the miniature. This is one of the reasons why I've left them mostly till towards the end. Um, and with the bone white, we're going to use that, like I said, on the teeth and the nails. We also want to get that on the underneath of the mushrooms. And this can be quite fiddly, so honestly take your time with this. Try to make sure that when you're painting the stalks of those mushrooms, that, that you're not coming too low and, and catching sort of the skin and things like that does have mushrooms in some amazingly awkward places to paint so like right off the top of his head and things like that so again try and keep with those small small controlled brush strokes we're also going to do his little bone charm I don't know what this is. Looks like it's made out of seashells or something. Might even be made out of bones, who knows? So I'm going to move on to using a soft tone now instead of the Agrax Earthshade. You could use an Agrax Earthshade if you wanted, um, but I would advise watering it down slightly for doing the bone part. The soft tone from the Army Painter is also a brown wash, but what makes the soft tone unique is it tends to um, shade the recess points, but without overly uh, toning down the colours on top. So, for bones especially, it it becomes sort of like a sepia tone, but without being too aggressive then. It's a very, very light. It is what it says. It's a soft tone. Um, so, you use that across the, the bones. I also use this on the mushrooms. Now, to do this, I've turned the miniature upside down. And the reason for that, which is quite important, is if you do end up putting a splodge that's a little bit too big and you need to manipulate, and it... it 
rolls down the miniature, or rolls down the mushroom stalk, and then lands on the skin tone that you've already painted, and you might be ruining some of the some of the stages that you've done. So for this to avoid any uh, mixed contamination and things like that, I'm making sure to paint this with the miniature upside down, so that the paint itself then is coming down towards the mushrooms rather than down towards the skin tones. Just making sure to do the, the teeth and the nails in the same way. But this is so light and it's so thin it doesn't detract too much from those nails so you won't need to really overdo um, overdo the wash just use light amounts because you go back to the bone white then and just pick the the edges and we also do the same with the mushrooms themselves and this is quite fiddly this is difficult so again I'm using a very thin brush for this and also very controlled light strokes so we just pull in the paint gently down those mushrooms again that creative license comes in because what you're doing is you can leave those little gaps however you feel they should see uh, they should sit so what you end up with is these sort of like um, illusions of tones between sort of like the uh, the stalk itself looks as if it's um, bumpy so that it doesn't look flat because what you want to try to avoid is just painting back onto the mushroom the same tone in one flat color because you'll take away some of the character and the same thing with the nails when it comes to painting the nails if you bring the brush straight down so from the top of the nail to the bottom, but also leaving gaps in between, then it creates that illusion that those nails have depth to them. I apologize that my camera is a little bit out of focus, but we'll see now, we'll put it back and we'll show you anyway. So there you go, you can see the lines just sit in there. So um, again, it, it creates a bit more depth to your, your, your model's nails and, and those little bits can make a big difference to the overall model because sometimes when your friends look at your miniature they want to see all the details and all the hard work you've put into it. There we go. Sometimes you might notice when, when paint in some of these lines and some of these tones and some of these points. Uh, it's almost, uh, I'm so gentle, it's almost as if the brush is, is barely touching the miniature. And that's that's good, that's kind of what you, that's kind of what you want to aim for, is, is instead of, like I say, putting too much pressure on the miniature, too much pressure across the brush, um, you just want to use the tip and the edges of the brush to do these controlled strokes. So taking your time and really sort of uh, working on those uh, brush strokes is, is a, a great great way to go. It's a great um, it's a great technique to learn. So we've done the toned down skin, we've done the uh, the weapon and the more earthy tones on the belt and things like that. So we're going to move on and we're going to make um, the mushrooms really stand out and look incredible because again when this is on the table people are going to be looking down on your miniature and they're going to see the mushrooms probably as one of the first parts. So you're going to use a Mephiston red as a base coat, cover the whole tops of whichever mushrooms you like, you can pick and choose which ones you want um, because we're going to do two different colours. Just be wary of this part of the mushroom here. So on the fold where the mushroom comes around to the um, the bone white underneath, just be careful here because you don't want to overdo um, the, the red and you don't want to, that, that red to sit onto the, the cream colours that we have already done. So like I was saying about picking and choosing which mushrooms you want to be red, we're also going to use a serious purple, almost sounding like I said a serious purple for a moment there, um, and this serious purple is going to be uh, the other colour that I use, so I tend to use two different colours for the mushrooms so that it doesn't all look as one tone. It's nice to have a bit of a mixture, it's nice to have a bit of a choice, gives people something to look at and it breaks up the uh, the, the single colour on your miniature as well, makes it a bit more interesting. And it ties in with the rest of the warband because my small mushroom I painted purple, as you might notice from a previous video. 
So, toning that down, we're going to use Agrax Earthshade. Agrax Earthshade, surprisingly enough, actually tones red down in a fantastic way because it goes dark, but it sits in those recessed areas. When it comes to painting the red back up, the darker points look absolutely fantastic on red, especially in Fist and Red. This, this is a, a personal favorite sort of concoction of mine when it comes to reds. Using Agrax is really, really interesting. You can also put it over the purple and we'll paint that back up in a second. We'll show you that in a moment. But yes, Agrax Earthshade on a Mephist and Red is a winner for me. I, I personally enjoy that kind of combination. go once you dry you can see what I mean by the way the Agrax Earthshade has shaded that red down very very nicely indeed so you're gonna go back to Armafist and Red and build those red tones back up and being as we've done it all the way through we're gonna to continue to use very very small controlled lines now to make this easier for myself uh, I've just stood the miniature on my table rather than holding it that means the miniature will stay perfectly still while I uh, control these small brush strokes again with a thin down paint these uh, this red is going to blend back into the base color so whereas it looks bright when I paint it on it will dry darker and it will dry in a nicer tone that will ultimately um, create the balance and the blend between the uh, the highlights as well. Again like I was saying earlier with the creative license it's just about following the lines back here so you, you pretty much like the miniature has been sculpted in a way that is so nice you've got control over where um, it's essentially kind of like a dot to dot I guess you can just paint the, the, the red back up onto those raised points because the raised points are so prominent it's such a, a, a lovely miniature in terms of how to paint it or where to paint it that you can um, you can really start to bring that tone back up and just follow the lines as you see this point that, that, that I'm painting on the larger mushroom as you can see it's such a big folded point that I can just build in small stages so I can do the front part and then see how far back I want that tone to go so in other words we're not just throwing the paint on the miniature we're not under doing the paint we're trying to make sure that we are rebuilding that red tone that we shaded down with the Agrax I'm going around the spots, trying to avoid paint in the spots, so leave that Agrax, um, or, or rather I'm leaving the Agrax around those spots, again creating that depth, creating that, that illusion that, that those spots are quite heavily raised and that there's a shaded area around them, like so, because those spots you can paint in other colours later on. Again, this has helped me out quite a lot having the miniature sat on the desk rather than holding it in my hand. The thing I struggled with or I found difficult with this miniature is the base is quite large so it wouldn't fit on my painting handle. So I had to hold the base in my hand as normal or find other alternatives like balance him on the desk like so. Has to, I, I have to say though, this has probably been one of my favourite miniatures to paint to date. Um, I've painted quite a lot of different miniatures and some of the bigger miniatures, some of the more um, advanced miniatures are excellent from, uh, from different suppliers. Games Workshop ones in particular are fantastic to paint. The level of detail that they have and the amount of character is so, so good. Um, that it makes painting fun, it makes painting fun to learn and it also makes painting fun to do different techniques with as well. 
there's so much character behind them so yeah they do really fantastic um, and this is one of my one of my favorite miniatures to paint it's going to be going in my sort of uh, painting hall of fame because it's, it's just such a lovely miniature and funnily enough i wasn't going to pick this miniature to paint uh, this was entirely my son's idea my son loved this miniature so much i think purely because of the frog though um, but still my son loved this miniature so much he was the one that asked me if i could paint it so this is uh, this is the reasoning behind painting this particular uh, cave dweller here. So, highlighting the uh, Mephiston Red is Evil Sun Scarlet, and this is a similar red to the Mephiston Red, just a slight uh, highlight tone. So because we're highlighting now, we're using thinner brush strokes than what we used with the Mephiston Red. As you can see, we're just this time trying to pick out the highlights. Uh, the, the raised area, sorry. Um, again, using those very controlled, slow, uh, small brush strokes, just like so. And like I said earlier, it doesn't matter about seeing brush strokes in your miniature. Sometimes that adds to the charm and the character. It also adds to to showing off what you've managed to achieve as well. So don't be afraid of having one or two little brush strokes there. you can see the tone starting to build up on this mushroom hat hat I guess the mushrooms this cave dwellers here in some way um, but anyway so yeah trying to gently gently just add some very small thin lines in between those bigger points again creating that depth creating a bit more uh, to look at when you see it from the top you see those those tiny lines in between whereas I was saying earlier about Barely touching the miniature when you're dragging that paintbrush. So you're just barely using the edges of that that brush You see just like this So you're barely using the, the, the brush to just just drag uh, just just touch the, the paint to the miniature because you don't want to uh, You don't want to spoil your hard work and just go a bit too extreme so just take the take your time as I always say take your time take your time um, but it's important to take your time it's important not to rush it's important to, to sit down and really sort of um, enjoy the paint process enjoy sort of getting these little brush strokes and at the time when you're painting these brush strokes you might think oh this is this is a lot of work this is hard work um, but honestly once you reach the end of the miniature once you've finished painting and you look back on the miniature that you've painted and what you've achieved um, you should have a great sense of achievement and a great sense of pride in what you've managed to do as well I know this is uh, quite a long video so apologies for it being an hour long but I wanted to to cover it from start to finish rather than just do small little snippets i think this model being as as nice as it is um i think it uh i think it deserves to have um i think it deserves to have the attention shown deserves to have that little extra hour slot um so the highlight again whereas we've used the highlight I've sort of um, sped this one up again so that I'm not sat here waiting or, or you're not sat here watching every single little thing so because I've showed you with the other ones the very small brush strokes what I'm doing now is just using a highlight of Wild Rider Red now this is more of an orangey uh, highlight this is more of an orangey red and for this I'm just picking across the very edges and then just down the very very bottom part so I'm not using the Wild Rider Red up into the middle part of the mushroom so this is just picking out on the sort of like kind of like an edge highlight I guess but in in small sort of um, in small sort of line strokes so as you see here we're just going across just just build in sort of the the blend just build in some of the, the strokes here but we're not going too far into the miniature so this is just a highlight around the outside of the uh, the mushroom point what i am going to do 
um, because I was hesitant to paint the spots on the mushroom in a white or cream color uh, because I didn't want it to stand off the miniature too much. This Wild Rider Red is actually the color that I'm going to paint the spots on the red. Um, so that will tie the, the red in together quite nicely. But you can see now where that Wild Rider Red has given a lot of creative art around the, uh, the, the, the big mushroom and the mushroom hair that, uh, that Moloch has there. So to give the purple a similar sort of um, effect, what we're going to do is we're just going to go back to the serious purple that we were using, the serious purple. We're just going to go back to that and with it being nice and thin, just bringing it up from the rounded edged areas up towards the middle. Now what I've done is I'm going around the dots, which is slightly tedious I know, but it is worth it. And as you're going up you're leaving those brush strokes again so again you're creating that, that element of your mushroom having um, sort of like bumps and like a skin texture to it because mushrooms aren't flat anyway so you don't want the color to be flat and then we're going to use very 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 thin highlights of pink horror so the paint is thin but we're also going to try to use a very thin brush as well see that for me is a little bit too thick we don't want our lines as thick as that so a little bit of water and we will remove that thick line there and then we shall move and try to make that a little bit thinner nice and gentle so you're barely touching the miniature until the paint just about reaches there nice And we're just going to hit the edges of the smaller ones with this pink as well, which I'll do in a sec. There you go. And it's up to you how far you want to take the pink up to the up, up the purple. Myself, I was only keeping the pink just across the edge, across the bottom here, yeah, just a little, little bit of a different tone. And here we go. Use the, the, the flat side of your brush to just quickly go around the edge of the smaller ones as well, just so that they've got the same kind of um, effect and they tie in quite nicely. So for the dots on the purple one, I'm actually using a Vallejo squid pink. This is a very, very bright pink. You can use any color you like. Um, I've used the pink obviously because we're using purples and pinks, it kind of ties them together so they, they sort of match and sit nicely in the, in the, the sort of color chart and they look like they belong. This is probably the most fiddly part of the whole paint job. Um, so again, take your time with this because this is um, this is quite complicated. I've had to use a very small brush for this and practically that's all I'm doing is just dabbing the edge of the brush on. So like I was saying about the Wild Rider Red on these spots, going to use the red so that it ties in with the rest of the uh, mushroom rather than using a cream or a white and having it stand off too much. Uh, personal choice again, you can paint the dots whatever colour you like. If you want to paint them white, you paint them white, you know, it's your miniature. Again, the rule point is to just hit the raised point, try to leave that, that um, shaded area that we've created by uh, painting around them. I mean, all in all, this is, as I was saying earlier, I've been a really fun miniature to paint. I've learned one or two techniques painting it, which is what it's all about, you know, it's having fun, enjoying your painting, and getting the most out of your miniatures. You get so excited about buying new miniatures, and sometimes, um, sometimes painting them can be a little bit daunting. And it doesn't have to be daunting, because every miniature you paint adds to your experience. So every time you paint a miniature, uh, no matter how good or how bad the paint job is, the better you become. And it's always the case, every time you paint something, 
you improve. Every time you paint a miniature, you improve. So don't be afraid to just get stuck in. Just make sure that you do some simple, simple things like thinning your paints and um, controlling your brush strokes and things like that. And you'll pick it up in no time. So we're going to move on to an avalanche sunset, which is a nice yellow. Uh, that nice yellow tone uh, is just going to go into the eyes. Um, and I think that's pretty much about where we're at for Morlog anyway. So just a little bit of Agrax earth shade into the eye socket, just to tie that yellow into the green. So only in the eye socket there. Yeah, it's just like that. You don't want to put the Agrax over the green and, and undo the hard work that we've done. So yes, there's the warband all complete. So once they've all painted and all dried, this is how they will look. The other effects, the other techniques that I've shown you with the white you can use on the mushroom, the red you can use on the flying squig, the mushroom itself, the, the spike shroom, I've actually got a video up for that. So uh, the colors again, like I say, the purples and the reds uh, are all similar to tie Monarch in. So thank you very much guys for tuning in and for watching thank you so much for sticking with me for an entire hour um, and i hope this helps enjoy your painting guys thank you very much